everyone, my name is Melissa from Inspire Me ASAP. In my previous video, I shared with you a fun and engaging way to introduce a new unit of study all about celebrating characters. If you missed hearing about how I use the ingredients to make chocolate chip cookies as a way to kick off the new unit, then you're going to want to first click on the link in the description below to watch that video before coming back to watch this one. In today's video, I'm excited to share with you another fun and engaging way that I teach another lesson in my character unit. And today's lesson is all about noticing and observing the feelings of characters. For the next part of the video, I am going to talk as if I am teaching this lesson directly to my students. I am going to model what the lesson would look like, what the lesson would sound like, using the different components of a mini lesson. So making that connection, the explicit instruction, linking to their independent daily reading time, and then coming together again for the closing or for the sharing. Before we begin, it's important to note that you will need to have some sort of mentor text to use to refer to during this lesson. So the example that I am going to use would be this story right here, Don't Throw It to Mo. This is something that I'm not going to read aloud to my students in its entirety. We already read it in a previous lesson and I'm just coming back to refer to it. Let me make sure I have everything ready. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. Readers, last week you learned how to use sticky notes as a way to write down what you were noticing and learning about one of the characters in your book. We gathered information and wrote down that information that we were learning on the sticky note about the characters in our books. Well, boys and girls, today, we're going to focus on noticing a character's feelings. Now, before we begin, I want you to think about, I want you to think about how many different feelings you might have throughout the course of a day. Maybe you were happy this morning if your mom made you pancakes in the morning for breakfast. That would make me happy. Maybe you were angry or mad because Somebody called you a name on the bus and it hurt your feelings and you didn't like that. That would make me angry or mad. Maybe you were proud or you were pleased when you knew the answer to one of the questions that I asked for a math lesson. Maybe you were scared or nervous about something. Boys and girls, your feelings change throughout the day. Just like you have feelings that are constantly changing, so do characters. Feelings are a character's emotional response to what is happening around them. We know how a character is feeling in a couple of different ways. We know how a character is feeling because the author tells us how the character is feeling. We also know how the character is feeling by paying attention to what the character is doing, what the character is saying, or what the character is thinking. Boys and girls, I want us to go back to this story, this story that we already read. Don't throw it to Mo. And I want us to go back to the ending of the story. And I'm just gonna read aloud to you the ending. And I want you to see if you can identify what Mo was feeling at this part of the story. And I want you to jot that down on your sticky note. Okay, so let's see if we can go back to this story. And I remember at the beginning, the author's telling us how much Mo loves football, right? He was so happy and excited to wake up every morning. I mean, look at how happy and excited he was for the chance to go or for the opportunity to go to his football practice and play his football. He loved it. Well, let's come over here to the middle where we were learning how nobody was throwing the ball to him and Oh, that might have made him really angry or mad, 
frustrated, but I want us to come to the end of the story. And let me see if we can reread the ending. And if you can identify, if you can notice what Mo was feeling. Okay, we remember this part of the story. He's coming in here for the catch. Mo catches it. He runs with the ball past the goal line. The Robins win. They cheer. Look at the look on his face. Look at the expression. Look what he's doing. Coach Steve, Mo says, your plan won the game. No, it didn't. The coach says, you're the one who caught the ball. Look at his face. Look how happy he is. Happy and excited. That would absolutely describe what this character was feeling at the end of the story. Different than at the middle of the story when he was a little bit frustrated that they weren't throwing him the football. Boys and girls, I could write on my sticky note how he was happy or excited at the end of the story on page 32 because he won the game. I want you to turn and talk to your partner. What did you notice about Mo's feelings and what he was feeling at the end of the story. Go ahead and turn and talk. Maybe it's something that you wrote down on your sticky note or it was something that you were thinking as we were rereading this part of the story. Go ahead and turn and talk. After a minute, I would come back together and I would say, boys and girls, it's now time for you to start your independent reading time. As you are reading today, whatever books you're reading, for your independent reading in your book nook, whatever book that is, I want you to really think about the character's feelings. Maybe in your reader's notebook, you're going to draw me a picture that is going to represent the look on your character's face, and then you're going to identify what feeling they were feeling at that part in the story. You can draw their emotion, their expression. You can draw a speech bubble, something that they were saying. Boys and girls, now it is your turn. Go ahead and start your reading time. Now, when the students are independently reading, I would then use that as an opportunity to meet with my guided reading groups. And if you're teaching remotely and you're looking for tips about how to meet with your guided reading groups via Zoom, which I'm currently doing, you can click in the links below and I will make sure that you can um, check out the other YouTube video that I have all about teaching guided reading groups on Zoom. But when I meet with my guided reading groups, I like to dive a little deeper by expanding what was previously already taught in the mini lesson. So I would have my students in that guided reading group, whatever book that they that we are currently reading with that group, I would have them use this self-monitoring tool right here. What feelings did the character feel? as a way to track the different feelings that the character has as they are reading. So this is an example of what it would look like. The blue would represent proud, pleased, yellow, angry, mad, excuse me, pink, nervous, scared, happy, purple, excited, silly, and then green would represent sad or lonely. And as my students are reading their books about their characters in the guided reading group, they would go ahead and anytime they're noticing a character's feeling, they would take that sticky note out and put it on that page that represents what that character was thinking at that point or what the character was feeling at that point in the story. Then after a few minutes of reading time, my students in the group would then share what they observed about the character in their book and what their character was feeling. And again, this is a great way to show text evidence for students to really get used to using the text for evidence um, and proving why, uh, why, what, proving what answer they are giving, proving their response, instead of just saying, because I know, well, how do you know? Go back to the story to prove it. 
It's also an excellent way um, to really demonstrate that the students are thinking about what they are reading and they're actively doing that as they are reading. As we were, as we um, wrap up with our guided reading group, I would then call the whole class back over and we would have our closing or we would have our sharing time. And I would say, boys and girls, during your reading time today, what did you notice? What did you learn about the different feelings that your character has? Turn and talk to your partner and share what you noticed about the book that you read today. And this is, an, uh, this is the time where I would also take the opportunity to maybe share something that I did with my guided reading group. So maybe I would say, well, boys and girls, it, when I met in our, my guided reading group today, we noticed that in the story that we were reading, she was very, and then I would name the character, scared or sad because, and we would write together why she was nervous or scared, putting the page number to include that text evidence. And during that closing or sharing, the students could also add their own sticky notes up to our anchor chart. So for example, if in the book that they were reading, the character, they noticed that the character was angry or mad, they would on that sticky note, write down why and when that character was angry or mad, putting the page number, putting the character's name, and then they would add their sticky note to our anchor chart. And this could be taught not just like a one and done. This is something that you could refer to in over the course of several different lessons, whether it's in small group or whole group on teaching um, and celebrating all about characters. Well, I sure hope that this lesson gave you some ideas of how you can teach characters' feelings to your own students. Please be sure to make um, that you are on my email list or you are subscribing to me on YouTube so that you're not going to miss out on some of the other character, video, character lessons that I'll be having videos about that I taught to my students. And you can do that by clicking the subscribe button to make sure that you do not miss any. Now go ahead and find some books with some strong characters and get ready to teach this lesson to your own students.